Let's talk a little bit about our setup, studio setup for painting in the wet and wet process. Let's talk first about our all important water containment system. You'll notice that I use three extra water containers over here on the far right, as well as sort of a primary uh, container that's right close, uh, right next to my blotter. The blotter is very high tech. It's a piece of toilet, uh, it's a roll of toilet paper wrapped with folded paper towel uh, four or five times, and uh, I usually change that out maybe every six, eight months. But uh, it absorbs a lot of water. The paper towel doesn't uh, uh, feather out, and it really drains water quickly out of that brush. And plus, it just has a nice character, you know, after uh, four or five months of use. Um, looking at some of the other setup that I have, I want to mention the uh, the leveler uh, that allows me to prop up my gator board at several different angles, a low angle or a medium angle, or for quick draining, a high angle. And we'll see now if I wanted to somehow turn this little demo into a sky area by adding extra water, and we do that sometimes. We don't always have to control our wetness. We see that immediately I start getting a downhill run on that wonderful Prussian blue and Aurelian pigment. We have somewhat of a green sky now. So again, blotter, leveler, gator board, Kilimanjaro bright white paper, which again allows that light bounce to come through those dense, rich pigments. In wet and wet, we're putting down, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of pigment onto the paper. And one of the uh, problems and mistakes that folks create for themselves, again, is too thin a wash, okay, where the pigment disperses and when the paper dries, uh, you have a relatively weak value, which doesn't convey your shapes well. I'm using a Cheap Joe's uh, Magic Dragon one inch flat brush. And again, you can see that the tip of this brush or, or, or the surface area of this brush pulls in water like a sponge. And that's the beauty of using a natural hair like Kalinsky Sable. I've used this brush now for close to two years. Uh, it's a beautiful deep blue enamel finish and uh, wonderful ferrule. And again, it gives me a great deal of control with any level of paint pigment intensity that I want to use in the wet into wet technique. There's no problem with using some of the less expensive uh, nylon and nylon blend brushes, but one of the things to realize is that one of our goals in wet into wet is to carry a dense amount of pigment onto the paper and the natural fiber brushes such as this Magic Dragon do a wonderful job of that. I'm using a Cheap Joe's porcelain palette, which again allows me to See that nice, clean, clear color? Cleans up very quickly. And that is where paper towels sometimes come in handy. But I can, in just a matter of seconds, get that surface back to almost pure white or close enough for our next stage. And again, I'm using American Journey tube watercolors, which in my view have a wonderful consistency for this type of painting. The key there again is to keep them moist at all times. And uh, if I showed you my Cheap Joe's travel palette, I don't take the porcelain palette to workshops. Uh, so I have a separate uh, plastic palette that I use full of uh, American Journey colors also. and. Uh, if I, if I take it to workshops, you're going to notice that the colors in my, uh, the pigments in my plastic palette are even more watered down than this. What you want to be able to do is to quickly dip into any of these colors and to get a rich concentration. And again, that requires that the pigments be moist, if not watery. So anywhere from toothpaste consistency to pancake batter consistency is going to work well for you.
I'm going to add a little bit of uh, cadmium scarlet into the bottom part of this experiment. And one of the things to consider when you practice this technique is to simply start out practicing and then you can develop what you've done and play around with it and you may even have a nice painting to result from it again without a lot of pre-planning but you can see now that I'm getting some of the Aurelian uh, grading down into the ultramarine blue and sienna mix so that I'm getting a nice kind of unexpected effect that's one of the greatest things about wet into wet painting is that what you're really dealing with is watercolor fo following its natural laws uh, Whitney said again uh, substances obeying their own laws do beautiful things. So with wet into wet painting what we're trying to do is serve more as a guide than as a control freak to try to make everything happen just so. And if we allow that freedom for the watercolor to work with the pigments on its own and to try at the same time to meet some of our basic plans and value guidelines then we may end up with some very unexpected but beautiful results. So it's sort of a push and pull combination of who's in charge. Sometimes you will be and sometimes the paper and the pigment will be and that's what makes this technique so exciting.